Number 11, Vincent Lawson. Number 45, Mariante. Number 23, Alan Ray. Oh my God, so number, close. Number 18, Daniel Chandler. Number 2, Yak Asuma. Number 9, Kevin. Number 8, Brian. And number 6, Aditya Bandar. <clears throat> now introducing your team from SUN. Number 11, Aoyong Sir. Number 22, Sean Bolo Wan. Number 9, Dan Jin Fa. Number 7, Jensen Lin. Number 18, Mohammed Irfan. Number 94, Liu Chi Chen. Number 12, Paul Lok Yu. Number 93, Li Shen Li. Number 91, Liu Chi Chen. Oh. Number 14, Lin Ming Lin. Ooh. Number 88, Wei Chen. And number 40, Li Kai Chen. Oh, they don't have their big guys today. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna be really bad this season because I don't know. I was gonna say like how much do you know? Sorry, I did I did one of the KL Dragons games and I know nothing about the dragons and end up being okay. Drake, can we have the player sheets please? The player sheets? Player sheets? Can you grab it from me? Blue sheets, their stats, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us what to say? Oh, actually, uh, give me my laptop back. The, the, yeah, that way. Thank you. I can actually pull up the stats on the laptop at least. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Hello, professional. Too. Are we live? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, this matchup is just about to begin. Please put your hands together for both these teams. Okay. Okay. Just one second. All right, welcome. If you're just joining us. This is the SSL 8 Hero Semi-Final between XUM and Sunisha. Nice warm Saturday or Sunday here in Maba Stadium. I don't know, it feels like the ACs are on though. Yep. We got them for the semi-finals this season. So if you are planning to make it down to watch the games, we do have air conditioning today. Irfan's got the ball up top. Irfan missed their... Uh, their elimination game last week and would have been a, a key factor, although they were facing XUM, was, was facing Red Baron last week, which, oh, is, a, which is a tough match. You, you need all hands on deck for that one. Yeah. All things considered, they put up a, a decent fight, but it, you know, as Red Baron does, they pulled away um, early in the second quarter. Oh, I, I thought you meant from the start of the tip off. <laughs> Uh, the other team here, Tunisia, they've been the uh, Cinderella story up till last week. They were, they came in, the young, unknown team, and had some pretty good victories in the regular season against the against the Knights 
And basically surprised a lot of teams. They beat the undefeated Saints Sports Titans as well. But last week uh, in their in their uh, quarterfinal game, they were unable to get it done against the Knights, and the Knights got their revenge. Foul there by number nine. We'll look to see how um, number 11 for Tunisia, Vincent, uh, does today. Their big man in the middle. He's been critical all season for them and was also, uh, might have been a big reason they lost last week as he went down with injury uh, early in the second half. Averaging 23 points a game this season. Mm -hmm. Quite a big part of their offense. A double double, in fact, with 10 rebounds as well. That's right. Almost William there almost with the steal. Yeah. He's also been key to the Sinidia defense. Nice drive inside by Irfan. Strong finish for number 18. Strong perimeter defense here by XUM. Yeah, yeah XUM's, uh, you know, if you, if you look at them on paper, they are what we call a veteran team. Uh, a lot of older guys, but they have the size and they have the toughness and they all know how to play basketball. So that perimeter defense is not a shock for XUM fans. Good finish there. Off balance. <laughs> But you know, XUM's problem all season has been uh, their bench. They really don't have the depth, and today without their leading scorer, Dexter, either, uh, it may end up being a problem. So you've got the veteran know-how of XUM and size versus the young speed of Sunisha. Tunisia does look to have the deeper bench, but mm -hmm. it all matters about production. That's right. Thanks. And you know, every game this season, Tunisia has, I think, pretty much come uh, with their full bench every game. Mm -hmm. So good on them for the consistency. But yeah, reasonable production out of at least Eight to ten players. Strong minutes and strong points every game. Ooh, open lane right there. Good luck. Good Try idea. Trying to be unselfish. She could have gone up himself, but... Ooh, good inbound pass right there. Post up on our Facebook. And the easy two. Hey, hey. pushing the ball out quickly. Three on two. In front with the move. And he misses oh, the layup. That's a layup that he finishes normally. Yeah. He's got a very dynamic offensive game. Brian pushing guys. the ball quite quickly, makes the pass. Ooh, that's a strong move. Strong move. Sorry. He's been doing that all season long. Yeah. Ooh, and one. Oh. 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 Pull back at the last second. Mm -hmm. Vincent posting up, asking for the ball. But Brian decides to take the pick instead. Let's see where I'm pushing the ball up again. Three on three this time. Good move, and again, this is the layup. Good recovery there by Sinesia on the transition. Vincent turning on the spin cycle there. Mm -hmm. He's got a really solid inside game. Good footwork. Feet work, feet work. I checked say feet work. <laughs> All about the feet work. <laughs> and 
Yeah, I'm a pure chicken. <laughs> <laughs> XUM looks gassed already. Uh, maybe they'll get their second win here late in the first quarter. Nice one two passes right there. Score is 13 to 12 to XUM. If you're just joining us, this is. Ooh, this is nice crossover. Over. This is the SSL 8 Hero Bracket Semifinal. Incent with the three. Rinse it out. Again, quite a fast pace pushing the ball up by mm -hmm. both teams. But XUM has missed a number of those. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not really taking mm -hmm. the time to settle into their offense <laughs> or allowing the defense to settle either. Right. So it goes both ways. They're getting some good looks underneath, just not making any. Mm -hmm. This guy I like, Hanson. I like his game. Ooh, good drive. Yep. Oh, again. He's very unassuming, but he's got that speed and he's got some hops too. Ooh. <laughs> Another <laughs> missed layup. Oh, they look like uh, a step slow today. Good block right there. Uh, we got air punch the here. Thinking, let's see if we can make this one. Oh, he gets it. Uh, Two points for the rating. One here. So just for everyone listening, uh, as I mentioned, this is the SSL 8 Hero Bracket Semifinal. We're introducing it for the first time this season. Essentially, these are the teams that have gotten eliminated from last round, the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. Giving everyone an opportunity to continue their run in the that's game. That's right, that's right. So the winners here would, would then meet the other side of the hero bracket to play for the Hero Cup. Mm -hmm. Some important playoff style experience for each team. That's right. That they usually wouldn't have gotten. Well, maybe the NBA should take a cue for... Yeah. <laughs> should we give him a call? Yeah. Although the NBA playoffs, I feel like, are doing just fine <laughs> this season. It's been some of the most entertaining playoffs in a while. But it, it sort of looks like we're going to get the two same yeah, teams again. <laughs> After all of the drama mm -hmm. at the start of the... <laughs> Pelicans looked good yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yep, they did. Oh, good look to Vincent again. Ooh. Bounces out. Let's see, we am up by five. Two minutes left in the first quarter. Both teams look gassed early here. Maybe they need to look at their bench for the second quarter. Mm -hmm. Not many substitutions so far. Mm -hmm. But they are trying to push a quite fast pace, so yeah. <laughs> it is taking a little one. Yeah. Nice jump shot there by Irfan. But you know what, even though, you know, sometimes the first game of the day, even for the players, they, they kind of sense that energy. Mm -hmm. By the second and third game, everyone's pretty uh, amped up. Also takes a while to get used to the environment, mm -hmm. the lights. So XUM is, most of them are pretty experienced players. I, I would imagine most of them have played at MABA, but I know for Tunisia, it's the first time for them being in here, or last week was anyway. As we get a foul on number 32, I believe. Hansen asking for a sub here. Two free throws for Lee Chen Wee here. This guy's name is Chun. Number 18 is Chun. I like that name. <laughs> According to the... Oh, is that his real name or like a... His real name is Daniel Chandra, apparently. <laughs> A.K.A. Chun. Oh, 
Sean with the drive. Oh, and he, oh, oh. almost hits it. The defense stopping the fast break right there. Brian Mighty Mouse with the crossover up top. Ooh, my, nice my prediction for the Heart and Hustle winner this season. No, yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a good bet. Ooh, takes it in, but good rebound right there. And good put back. It's where I'm up by eight. 13 seconds left in the quarter. Jensen Shot clock's side. off. Ooh. Side ball with five seconds left. Let's see if they can claw back some points. Uh, refs are letting them play here early. A lot of no calls. It's the playoffs. You won't get the same kind of fouls that you do in the regular season. Ooh. <laughs> At the end of the first quarter, in case you guys didn't hear Andre right there on the loudspeaker, it is the end of the first quarter. XUM up 22 to 14. How do you think this game's gonna go, Han? You know what? Early on, uh, I would have thought the advantage would be to Sinesia this game with their youth and uh, the deeper bench. Mm -hmm. um, but XUM, you can never count them out. Uh, they have that, that experience uh, on their side, even though they don't have the numbers today. And I, as we mentioned, no Dexter. Um, I still think that this uh, XUM team will pull it off. I mean, they've been consistent all season long they i believe they were four and one during the regular season mm -hmm. they're in a in a tough bracket in a tough group so they are i would say they are the favorites in this game kind of sounds like a playoff game that happened this morning and rookie team in the play philadelphia 76ers mm -hmm. going up against well, uh, also a rookie team but with the infusion of experience in al horford brad stevens mm -hmm. their captain on the sideline Kyrie irvin champion in his own right. So are you saying that Sinija needs to trust the process? Yep, they need to trust the process. Go through their big man, number 11. <laughs> Vincent Embiid. <laughs> so again, if you are watching us on Facebook Live, thanks for joining us. Thank you to our live stream sponsor, Chili's. And, um, as much as you love the live stream, come on down. Uh, we have air conditioning today in the stadium. <laughs> um, so yeah, come it's down, new, check out the game. It's a new addition for this season, air conditioning for all the games. <laughs> <laughs> always improving, always with a nice lefty layup. So Hansen with an extended break on the bench right now. As Vincent takes it in, strong drive, can't get it to go. Oh, nice break here. I'm surprised Irfan gave that up. Oh, this is why he gave it up. Nice. Got a nice pass and finish. Nice dive through the lane by Irfan. Oh, Ooh, nice high low there between uh, Vincent to, to Vicky down low, but he couldn't make it. Couldn't convert on the basket. Good jumper, top of the key right there.
Vincent's missed a couple bunnies down there. He needs to get going if uh, Tunisia is going to stay in this game. It's suddenly escalated to a 14-point lead for XUM. Three points for number 40. XUM pulling away a bit, 15-point lead right now. So you just got to figure out how to stop that, uh, like cut through the lane by Irfan here, and he's, yep. you know, if he's not getting the layup, he's creating shots for others. Mm -hmm. I think that's all down to XUM pushing the ball quickly, not allowing them to get settled. So, call the timeout, rethink their defense. So, what do you do here if you're if you're Tunisia? Anything? Any? Uh, any adjustments that you need to make either on the well, lineup side or the strategically on the court? Strategically, they are trying to play the same pace as XUM, which hasn't been working out, just going up and down. So maybe try to slow it down, put the ball in the middle, get their mm -hmm. big guy involved more. Mm -hmm. That'll slow the pace down a lot and allow them to stay behind the ball instead of. Yeah. You're right about that. And, and during the season, their strength has been to push the ball, but against XUM, yep. they're trying to Just beat them at their own game. Yep. A team that's better than them at that game. Right. But you're right about Vincent as well. He gives them a different look. Mm -hmm. um, and they're more dynamic on offense if they're able to go to him down low. Ooh, cut right there to the open basket. And there's a... Uh, that veteran experience again out of the timeout. I see him drop a nice little inbounds play, which is basically just clear the lane. <laughs> Tell you what, though, no matter how this game goes, Sunita's got a bunch of good experience this mm -hmm. season. Yep. Uh, I believe this is their first open tournament that they're playing in together. These are, this is the Indonesian club from the Sunway University. As finishes. Maybe next year we convince them to play with their full team, the Sunway University full team. Well, I mean, I don't think they're officially affiliated with Sunway. They just oh. happen to be all Sunway students Graduate. or alums. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to see some university teams join us. Mm -hmm. But as someone that plays in the league, I would not. I'm too old to play against the college kids. Well. With your GM chat on, I. I Head on, I think you'd like to see more competitive, more stronger oh, teams out there. So. <laughs> Take the coach head off. <laughs> the commissioner head off. Head on. <laughs> yeah, this season, the most teams we've had in SSL is 20 mm -hmm. teams. Again with the perimeter defense oh. and a 24 second violation. Again. A little awareness to get the shot up there, I guess some help from the bench. But. Six minutes left in the second quarter. Again, cutting oh. into the lane, but could not make it fall. And that was pretty poor defense from Tunisia. They were, they should have been able to stop that easy drive, penetrating through the middle. Again, each team matching each other, fast break for fast break. Oh, and the foul right there. First number eight, Brian from Tunisia.
tough right there. So they're getting in into Vincent, but he's catching it way too high up on the... Yep. He needs to be able to catch it on the block and make a move as he did early in the first quarter. Oh, draw the double team and send it back right. out. Vincent with the pick. Could not hold on to the ball right there. And X2 and break out for a fast break and could not make it go, but still have control of the ball. Cannot finish again. Good defense by XUM. XUM team. We're getting a couple of the a couple of the starters back on for Tunisia here. Let's see if they can inject some energy and get back on the on the scoreboard. They haven't scored in a little while. Good defense right there. Gets the steal. Could not finish. Tried to post his way in right there. And next to him and off a running. <laughs> oh. Vincent has the mismatch. You know, he just, Tunisia's, Tunisia's doing the classic young team thing here. They're getting a little bit flustered. They're trying to manufacture shots instead of allowing the offense to come to them. Just playing what the defense gives them and uh, instead trying to force and create shots that are not there. But credit to XUM, they're playing great defense. Another one-on-one -on -one move here that's not going to get it done. And... <laughs> XUM just keep missing their <laughs> open layups. This should be a 40 point game yeah. at this point. Again, three on two again. Make it four on two. And can't finish. Let's see. One more time. Good awareness there to move out of the key. Not get caught for three seconds. Chun draws the foul. A mercy call there by the ref. <laughs> Time out by Sunizia. Can we go this time out? Can we pull up, can we pull up the graphic, the, the bracket graphic here? Let everyone at home check this out. 21 point game with three minutes left in the second period. It's gonna be hard for Sunizia to pull back this. For their, for their youth and their energy, um, they're not a very high scoring team, Tunisia, so to mm -hmm. make up this deficit is going to be a problem. I mean, um, they relied a lot on grit and hard work in the regular season. I remember watching them a couple of times. Yes. This camera angle, it's so not flattering. <laughs> Just outmatched a little bit this time by XUM. Bit too late on that pass. Vincent was open. Three second violation. Defensive three. Buy one. 
XUM in the penalty here with three minutes left. Five fouls already committed in quarters. Tunisia not moving very much off the ball. Mm -hmm. Ooh, good cut and good pass, but unfavorable box. Miscommunication there on the break. Not timing his pass right there. Turnover there. They need to move the ball, move their bodies, and again, try not to force the offense. Oh, he had William on the left side. And again, for all their youth and, and speed, I think the physicality of XUM is taking a toll on Tunisia. You can mm -hmm. see it in their body language. Yep. Again, easy cut right to the middle right there. And it's simple plays right like that, right? The the uh, the back door screen and the, the ball easy movement, the man the movement. Basket. Yeah, that's right. Not a whole lot of inside cutting. All, all the movement on the outside for some here. Kind of makes it easier for XUM to defend. Again, Vincent yeah. taking a 15-footer instead of uh, getting it down low. Three-second violation. Caused by all the cutting in the middle, draws everyone inside and then pushes the ball back out to confuse the defense. I like these XUM jerseys. What's that called? Is that uh, sublimation? Back there, probably. Yeah. Got like a little watermark, watermark of their logo yeah. on the back. Yeah. Looks like a plain white jersey, but it's not. Again, cut inside, foul, two shots. Shooting foul, number 22, Tunisia. So you think it'll be Cavs Warriors again? Looking like it, I mean. I would like to see how Brad Stevens game plans for LeBron, but just might be too much with Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving mm -hmm. out. But that said, Boston probably shouldn't be where they are now. Yeah. Either. I mean, <laughs> everyone counted them out. Everyone was yeah. counting Philadelphia is going all the way yeah, to the finals. Yeah. But how things change in a matter of a few games. Mm -hmm. Three points. Yeah. Giving them their first basket, I believe, in the quarter, if I'm not mistaken. And only one minute left. Good box out there by Hansel. Yeah, the, the, the difference between the Celtics and the Philadelphia 76 is quite apparent today in the outbound plays. You notice how the Celtics never lose the ball, always scored down the stretch from their outbound plays. Uh, inbound, you mean? In, yeah, so uh, out of timeouts. And, right, right. But the 76ers managed to turn the ball over twice down the stretch. <laughs> so the execution and discipline is quite apparent. It's going to be an interesting off-season as well in the NBA. Mm -hmm. A lot of free agents, a lot of trade rumors, a lot of potential moves, but who knows it. With the Cavs doing so well, the number one free agent might just stay.
So that's the first half, guys, of the first half of this game here. We're going to show you real quick. Um, here's a look at the playoff standings so far and where we're at. Mm -hmm. uh, as we mentioned, this is the first game of the Hero Bracket semifinal. Um, after this, we'll have the other half of the bracket, which is the KL Twin Towers versus Man at Arms. Should be a should be a good game. It should be a good game. Man at Arms last week. I don't yeah. know if you caught it. Almost pulled off the upset, but hey, could that, not hold on. But they were up uh, yeah. 24, I believe, at some at one point. And uh, same sports Titans come back. They take the lead with five seconds left or six seconds left, and end up winning by four. So that next game should be interesting as well. And then uh, the rest of the bracket, of course, playing for the SSL championship with the Knights taking on Red Baron and also J.R. Kriegers taking on the aforementioned St. Sports Titans. We'll be back after halftime. We are back here, second half of the SSL 8 Hero Bracket semifinal between Sinesia and XUM.
Thanks for following us here on Blue Black Arena. This live stream is presented by Chili. Facebook, give us a shout out, let us know what you think, let us know who you think is going to win this game and all of our other games coming up today. This is our first of four games today. Better look inside, better position from Vincent there. Mm -hmm. Hansen couldn't get him the ball. Again, kind of forcing it in there, but better position. The open three-pointer there. Can't leave him open like that. Yeah, and this is going to be trouble if Irfan gets hot from outside. He's already made a handful of baskets inside. Vincent there. The bank shot. Again, getting the ball in a better position, Tunisia is down low and creating from there as opposed to dancing up top and mm -hmm. trying to manufacture something one on one. Both teams playing quite slow right now. Comparative little. Uh, yeah, we've got four on two here and see what they can do. Ooh, good move, oh. but cannot finish. Yeah, Vincent saying, give me the ball. He had a couple options there, William did. And blew the layup. Oh, that's good. Oh my Ooh. goodness. It's getting hot. And the break is on again. Two on one. Ah, bad pop. Oh, good pick right there. I'm definitely taking it slower this quarter. What a backdoor cut there by Irfan, but he can't finish. Three by Henson. Let's not get it to go, but the rebound by Tunisia and the put back again. What do you think of the uh, New York Knicks head coaching hire? David Fitzdale, I think he was officially named yesterday. I think it's a good choice. The Grizzlies were a good team for quite a long time. Yeah, I'm but, not sure why they got rid of him. Oh, uh, well, I mean, injuries played a big part in not having a good season this year. Yeah. And that frustration, I think, boiled over to the players as well as the management, and they thought that they needed a fresh start. So. Right. Always got to find a scapegoat, right? Yeah. But I think it's landed on a promising role with a young team. A few bad contracts they need to get rid of, but yeah. that'll clear up in time, hopefully. Yeah, the rumors are that they got him to chase LeBron, but yeah. I don't know how. <laughs> LeBron and the uniform. I think they'll still need a couple of pieces if they, even for that to work. 
Might need a sit down between LeBron and uh, what's his name, the OKC guy. The former OKC guy. The former OKC guy. Who's now on the Knicks? Carmelo? No, no, no. Who's now on the Knicks? He's now on the Knicks. He, he was in the Carmelo trade. I mean, it goes to show we can't even remember his name, but he does have a beef with LeBron. <laughs> what are you talking about? The Turkish guy. Um, I mean, he's not important, but yeah, he does have a beef with LeBron, so they'd have to figure that out if they the want to get LeBron. The Turkish guy? Yes. <laughs> The big, the big, the power forward. Yeah. You know who he is. Uh, Cantor. <laughs> yes, Ennis Cantor. Ennis Cantor. <laughs> that Wait, guy. he was in the LeBron trade? No, he was in the Carmelo trade. He was in the Carmelo trade. He has a beef with LeBron. Right. So if they're going to get LeBron, they need to figure okay. that out. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I'm thinking a few steps ahead right now. <laughs> so the yeah. key piece to LeBron Ennis coming Cantor. to New York yes. is Ennis Cantor. <laughs> So you're you're not a, <laughs> you're not an NBA GM. <laughs> What's his face? Yep. Uh, that's how <laughs> that is not your day job. <laughs> Keyboard GMs. Yep. <laughs> yeah, LeBron, Paul George. Chris Paul, also a free agent, but most people expect him to re-sign with the Rockets. Mm -hmm. the Rockets looking real good. Yeah. They did drop one game to the Jazz and Donovan Mitchell, mm -hmm. up-and-coming star in the league. And the game they did lose, I mean, credit to Utah, but it's also, you know, the Rockets weren't hitting shots. Mm -hmm. Which you know, which is always going to be, it yeah, that was always going to be their Achilles heel, right? You're going to win or lose by the three and how you shoot. But the way I see it is, is they're not going to have four bad shooting games in any one series. So it's going to be tough to beat them. But Warriors over the Rockets. I mean, again, it's two teams that play the similar style. I just think the Warriors have too much defensively, too much experience in those types of situations, in those big games. Because so, again, even though the Rockets have been to the conference semifinals twice now, I think, it's that they just have not pulled it off. So it's hard to see them. Three points for number 18. Wayne, shut Wayne off the bench and scorches a three from the wing. Wayne just got back from an NBA All Access experience. Um, thanks to, I believe it was an Astro contest. He was the contest winner. And he got treated to all expenses paid flight to Phoenix. Watched the, watched the Suns and had a VIP access. Got to shoot on the court. I mean, I'm not sure how much watching the Suns is worth, but <laughs> maybe, yeah, playing on the court, stuff like that. <laughs> what did Chuck say about the, uh, the nachos? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't care what game it is, but they're gonna fly me out. And we got to interview uh, some of the players. We got to talk to Tyson Chandler. Astro hit us up, Astro. <laughs> What's that? Astro should hit us up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Devin Booker as well. Uh -huh. But yeah, what, what, what won him the uh, contest was what he just did. Stroking threes from downtown. They had a little uh, Instagram contest where you had to put up as many threes as you could in a minute. Okay. I guess they liked what they saw and Wayne ended up in Phoenix. I could do some video editing and make that look, <laughs> make that look legit. Yeah. <laughs> God knows I ain't making a few threes in a row. <laughs> have our own contest. Sure. <laughs> It'll be a, we'll just, just make it a video editing <laughs> contest. <laughs> so again, if you're watching us, drop us a note. If you're in the comments, let us know uh, what you think of this game, the upcoming games. Uh, again, after this, we will have Man at Arms versus KL Twin Towers, the other side of the hero bracket, followed by our championship 
uh, semifinals, which will feature the Knights and the Red, Baron. Red Baron, as well as J.R. Kriegers taking on the same sports Titans. Speaking of contests, the next week's our finals. What do we have in store? Finals will be intense. Mm -hmm. This year, also, we're having, uh, like we mentioned, the, the uh, Hero Bracket Finals, yep. but also the Elite Championship, which will essentially be the um, losers from the semifinals playing against each other. But again, giving teams a chance for, to win more this season. Do we have anything for our... For the uh, audience? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have the same shootouts that we've had before, so come on down. I mean, we're not giving out tickets to an NBA game. Yeah. Have <laughs> that right now. Yeah, I feel like uh, <laughs> it wasn't the best time to bring that up. <laughs> let's be real. But, let's be real. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll have a, we'll have contests. So come on down next week. It'll be Saturday, May 12th. The 12th. Yep. Which is also my sister's birthday. So oh, shout nice. out to Amalina. She is in Turkey right now. She's based in Denmark, Denmark but right now she is in Nepal. Oh, okay. Working with the UNHCR. Three minutes left in the quarter. Ooh, good, good double here. Oh, three second ball. got bailed out by a three second ball. Not looking good for Sunny right now. What do you think of uh, Grady's hair here, number 23 Grady. on Sunny I don't know if the camera can zoom in, but he's got a front <laughs> ponytail. Yep. Sort of going for that unicorn look, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Certainly not playing like a unicorn. They could use one right now. Pulls up the three, uh, and the hair got in the way, man. <laughs> that ponytail. But 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 good hustle right there. <laughs> gets, his, gets his own rebound and puts it back. I see I'm doing well to put the ball inside under the basket, but could not get that second pass into the big guy. Good off the ball screen, and two points. Nice inbound play yeah. there by XUM. Again, a much more structured and well-coached team. I mean, they have multiple coaches yep. on their team, which helps. Coaching and experience plays a big part right now in the playoffs. Just the, the ability to stay composed in all sorts of situations. Not rush things allow the players to come to them instead of forcing. And they also have a lot of experience playing together, yep. which always helps. And it's a lot of times the Achilles heel in this tournament, we have a lot of teams that come together just for fun, just to play in this one tournament. And that sometimes ends up being the reason for less success. Well, they, they just don't have that glue. Yeah. That, that experience of playing with each other, knowing where everyone's going to cut, when they're going to cut, whose spot is where, yeah. those, those defensive rotations, you know, those little, little things that mm -hmm. you just get by playing. And those little things add up and yep. they make the game easier. Mm -hmm. They allow you to trust your teammates as well instead mm -hmm. of, you know, just trying to go one-on-one -on -one and pull team ahead. Wee Kai Xiang misses his first free throw. It's the second. Fouled on the three point play. He's got one more coming up. Ooh, one of three. Oh, Vincent Embiid missed. 
Simmons. Hey, there's a Pavel right there, for the resting car. Nice shot by Ao Young Sam. And that's kind of been the difference in the game in that Tunisia hasn't had an open look the entire game. Mm -hmm. Axioms had a bunch inside and outside. Yep. It's just that ball movement and man movement is giving them open looks. Mm -hmm. See, again, going just inside and sending the ball back out just confuses the defense, mm -hmm. gets them caught. Yep. And an open field. Down, number 40, e. Guys 25 seconds left in the third quarter here. Looks like Sunisha is going to hold for one shot. Brian mm -hmm. is run. Eight seconds left. X2M pushing it down. We got five seconds on the clock. Enough time for another shot. Goes for a three. And does not get it to go. The end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. XUM leads Tunisia 17-40. It's a 30-point lead right now. It's quite hard to see the team pulling back that kind of lead in just 12 minutes, but well, 10 minutes. Yeah, a 30-point lead in any league is kind of hard to get back. But you know, if we're, if you're Tunisia. This is going to be your final game. You want to just end finish on a strong. High yeah, note, just right? finish strong. Yeah. Get some of that ball movement and body movement going, as you talked about. It looks like they're they're uh, body is okay yeah. on the bench. They're not they're not just holding their heads down. Yeah. And then on the other side for XUM, just continue to execute. Don't get hurt. They've been they've played a really good game. Um, and they made it look easy, but a lot of the little things that XUM has been doing is the reason they have a 30-point lead, the, the backdoor cuts, the ball <laughs> movement, the yep. discipline on offense, and also the physicality on defense. Who you got in the next game? Man at arms no. versus Twin Towers. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to say, I want to say Twin Towers, but I think Man at arms might just. Arms, they this season averaged uh, 33 point attempts. 33 three point attempts wow. a game. Well, what, what sort of percentage did they have? Let's, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's look it up. <laughs> but uh, they do like to jack them up. Uh -huh. Makes for an entertaining uh, game. And right. then on the other side, Twin Towers, they are, they are relentless. They never give up every season yeah. that they play. You know, yeah. you know how they're going to bring it. So, Although they don't have the offensive firepower that Man at Arms does. They do uh, like to get up and down as well. Ball movement, man movement. Uh, man at arms, group A. So yeah, they had a they had a difficult group. Man at arms did with uh, Red Baron and XUM here, probably the toughest group in the regular season. Back here for the fourth quarter. XUM versus Tunisia. Hero bracket semifinals for SSL 8. That same dive cut set up for Irfan. That's, that's just a nice play. You know, he missed that shot, but that's beautifully set up. Basic offense there. Whereas on the other side, the cut. Had a nice dose of that from Sinesia. That's all right, though. They know they know they've played a good season. I think if you ask anyone on Sinesia, they've already overachieved. They did not expect even to make the playoffs, let alone get to the quarterfinals after winning their wild card matchup. So, kudos to them. Meanwhile, for XUM, to me. And down open. Oh, good block. 
to me, XUM needs to finish the season strong. They should be, in my mind, the hero champions, the hero bracket champions, so. Looking good in the first semifinals. We'll have to wait mm -hmm. and see how Man at Arms and Twin Towers goes. The back is open on Sunday. Travel right there. Ooh. Out of bounds. I'm not quite sure why he was running out of bounds to begin with. Varianto. Might not have been expecting the pass right there. <laughs> why are you running out of bounds? Out of bounds and away from the ring. <laughs> yeah. so. What is over there that you need to be present for? Again with the inside pass, quite easy by XUM. Oh, another nice dive cut there as well. But yeah, they, they were, as we mentioned, in probably the most difficult group, Group A, and had a great season. Kind of, uh, you know, not much was expected of them, and they came out with a pretty well-balanced team. As you mentioned, the experience, but also they've got guys like Irfan that can score any moment. And again, today, not in attendance, their leading scorer, Dexter, as well, who's been a highlight reel all season. Here's Wayne. Again, good ball Ooh. movement, but... That was way too close for Wayne. He needs to be three feet behind the three-point line, and he'll, he'll hit it. He's also Ikram's uh, swish, swish brother? Swish brother. Ooh. Wild pass right there, but finds his man. Yeah, so man at arm shooting at a 25, 24.8% clip. From three. That can't be right. Oh, here we go. Yeah, 30. Yeah, Man at Arms shoots 32 threes a game and makes eight. Not too bad, I suppose. For this league. Yep. Tunisia is starting to feel the, the heat a bit, cramping up. Getting it where he likes it. Ooh, makes it count. He had the open lane, but decided to go to the three point line. Yeah. I guess he has a bit of percentage from. He hasn't played too much in the regular season. Mm -hmm. He did hit a three last game against Red Baron. the unicorn. Both teams taking it kind of easy. Now the game seems in hand. Three on one. Is 
that James Harden travel layup. Both teams getting tired right now, so just giving themselves a breather. So who's your NBA regular season MVP? Is it clear cut James Harden? It kinda has to be. I mean you have to reward a team as well as a player. You can't just look at individual statistics without considering how well the team does because how well you do and how well you lead your team reflects uh, your position in the okay. as well. So Which is why I wouldn't give it to LeBron, even though individually he is clearly the best player in the league. But he's, his role in his team's position in the league also matters. So. I mean, LeBron's got that same issue that Jordan had when he was playing, right? Like, he could be MVP. He could be considered MVP every season, almost to a fault, but, you know. I mean, but this season, I think, James Harden's been right up there as well. Yeah. You, can't, you yeah. can't say he's, there's nothing more that he could have done. Yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> consistent 50-point games. Contributing to 80, 90 points per game yep. <laughs> with rebounds, and, uh, assists, and points. So there's nothing much you can do. I remember what was it? Two seasons ago, they were talking about him not being able to lead, not being able to make passes and create, and now being he's, lazy on defense. Yeah, he's, which, which he which, stepped yeah, up as well. Yeah, but I mean, it's mean, not all defense, but right. he, he stepped it up a bit as well. But just how dynamic his offensive game now is. Uh, I think I think, he, I think he averages what six or seven assists a game. Yeah, I think yeah. above eight a game. Then again, like half of those are just to Clint Capella when he gets doubled. So, and I think yeah. it's hard. It's hard to say James Harden hasn't done enough. I think. Yeah. And he's been consistent over the past three years, number number what, number two or three in the voting as well. So I think you have to give it to him. Yeah. I mean and that that said though, i the reason I feel like the Warriors will beat them is because so much of the offense is relying on James Harden mm -hmm. for the Rockets. And not just his shooting, but him creating and it's a not to say that it's a it's a flat offense, but it's kind of predictable. Whereas the Warriors attack you from everywhere yeah. on the court. It's built around James Harden and his skill set right. to draw attention. Right. Uh, and the Warriors just have a flowing offense that anyone can go off, yeah. anyone can lead their team in scoring right. on that night. And also which is, which is what's interesting. I don't know if you noticed how uh, Drew Holiday has been guarding KD. Yeah. Which at first glance, at glance, I was watching this and I was like, why don't they go to K A? Why no, why are the Pelicans doing that? They they have bigger guys that could be guarding KD, and KD's getting any shot he wants. And then I was thinking maybe Alvin Gentry is a genius because even though KD is getting the shots that he wants and it's going into him, it's not getting anyone else on the Warriors involved, which is what they want to do. So yeah, you go to a mismatch. Yeah, you have an advantage, but you're actually. Getting not getting guys like Clay going and, well, and guys like uh, Andre Iguodala. I mean, it's it's tough since Steph's come back now. It's like right. you can guard KD. But right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that it's working. <laughs> it it well, worked can, for one game. Yeah, right, yeah, right. They, they did well in one game, but yeah. I mean, yeah. Even the Pelicans, even if they yeah, don't get through this, that game was all Rajon Rondo, yeah. man. He was picking them Controlling apart. Controlling the pace of the yeah. game quite well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they have an interesting offseason as well because they have a player that's a max contract player. Mm -hmm. But what do they do? Do they keep him and slow down the game again? Or do they you look? mean DeMarcus? Yeah, yeah, DeMarcus Cousins. Well, we haven't really had a good look at the two of them together. What, they played, uh, I mean, they what, played half a season together? A third of a season, two thirds of a season. But it was a clear difference in pace mm. with him yeah. on and off. Right. They're doing quite well with the pace that they have right now. Right. So it's like... Do they look to sign and trade him for another right. piece that complements AD right. or do they look to change their style again? Right. I like I like him as a piece on there because he's such a good playmaker oh, as well. I mean, he is talented, he is, he does make them a more a different threat. Mm -hmm. They have more avenues of 
attacking, but sometimes that can also take away from the other players. It takes away from Drew Holiday, it takes away yeah. from Rajon Rondo because yeah. they're not holding the ball There's as much. There's only one basketball. Yeah, they're not, and they, I, I would say they are more adept at controlling the pace of the game and controlling uh, and getting everyone else involved, whereas yeah. Demarcus is he's a good passer. He, he can hold the ball, but it just doesn't move as fluidly. Right. I'm just amazed also at the increase of productivity of uh, Rondo as soon as the playoffs roll yeah. around. Remember last season with Chicago, <laughs> yeah. you know, before he got hurt, he was the reason they were winning. I feel like he would be the best and the worst person to play with. Mm -hmm. During the regular season, I think it might. I think he's realized it as well that in his latter years in Boston, that if he tries to push his team too hard during mm. the regular season, they they don't react well. Yeah, I think he realizes yeah. his personality. He's probably like the worst person to be around, but yeah. the best. But the you best know. teammate to have. Right, you don't want right. to go up against him. Right. Like to... So I think he's realized he needs to pick his spots as well right. and time his uh, advice and how he controls his team. I'm curious how he's going to you know, end up historically. Is he going to be an all-time kind of guy? Is he going to be... I mean, yesterday's game, he had, what, the, the second highest uh, number of assists in a Assistant playoff game. game yeah. Which, you know, he did that almost quietly. Mm -hmm. Like. Sometimes you're like, wait, Rondo's still in the league? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had a bit of a rough patch in the middle with right. Boston needing to rebuild, and then I think he went to Sacramento for a bit, which was a bit of a mess of an organization at the time. So He seems to have found a good spot in New Orleans, so it'll be interesting to see him. 49 seconds here left in the game. XUM up by 39. XUM just looking to play off the clock right now. Just not looking to push the ball. Goes inside. Two points. 90 to, 92 to 51. So again, even though you know this result is the way it is, Tunisia should be proud of their season. They've done a really good job coming together. Again, winning some big games in the regular season and being that Cinderella team. But you know, we see how they really stack up against some experience and the big names of SSL. And XUM will move on to face the winner of the next game for the Hero Bracket. And we'll see them in the Hero finals next week. And that's the end of the game. X-Men defeat Tunisia 92 to 53 and we'll move on to the Hero Cup final. Again, thanks for joining us here. Final is XUM 92, Tunisia 53. Stay tuned on Facebook Live with Blue Black Arena, the Chili's live stream. We'll continue after this with the next game. We'll see you there.